Hey, Fitheads. Today we talked with the TRX Traveler. He does all of his workouts on TRX, and this was the exact opposite of what I expected from the conversation. I was so mind blown. Like, just thought it'd be about core and your whole body and stability and cardio. And it, he was like, it's like a bodybuilder. It was crazy. Yeah. Also, his name's Adam. We oh. we <laughs> we don't we don't really know if his real name's Adam or if his legal name is now TRX Traveler, which is an awesome <laughs> name. Which is an awesome name. So shout out to. TT or, or whatever. <laughs> I thought it was really cool. I mean, I got a TRX, so this was sort of a self-serving episode. Although I assume at this point for us, they're all sort of self-serving episodes. Yeah, of course. <laughs> well, our fun. audience is just probably clones of us, right? Right? Bros? Right, we... definitely. <laughs> Clone bros. I liked how we were talking about um, the muscle doesn't know if you're picking up a barbell or a dumbbell or a push-up or, or a rock, whatever or your or body rock, weight yeah. on a strap yeah. yeah it just knows like i'm i'm flexing right now this is weird <laughs> <laughs> and so that was sort of like his jumping off point for uh using the trx and being so dedicated towards it and that's ex almost exactly what happened to me this this quarantine you know i didn't have any of the equipment i wanted i got this trx and i was like oh this is weird oh this feels like pretty hard i wonder if uh it's the same or i wonder if this translates or whatever and that was fun talking to him i also really liked his sort of get out of your locked frame of like world view right. do you know what i mean mm -hmm. not just that's a, that's a tease i'll yeah. let you I'll let, I'll let him tell the story <laughs> <laughs> welcome to total fitness serious fitness for not so serious people hi adam welcome thanks for joining us uh, thank you for having me absolute pleasure so glad to have you. Are you traveling right now? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm not. Um, I'm in uh, I'm in rainy, grey London, where it's about uh, about five, six degrees at the moment. So uh, far from the uh, the sunny shores of Mexico and places like that, where I do normally hang around with the TRX. <laughs> hang around, ha! Pun. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like Max, you have a billion questions. You've been using a TRX lately, right? That's like your. I got equipment. a TRX for Christmas, I think, and uh, I'd always had one. I think, like most people, I saw it at the gym, and I was like, "Oh, that's funny. I wonder what that does." Ah, who cares? <laughs> uh, <laughs> and then I found you, Adam, um, because you're you're apparently you're the the TRX guy. Uh, <laughs> Right. he's here we have him so congratulations that's I did, awesome i did not know that i might yeah uh, that might have to be my next tattoo then great that's good <laughs> um but why don't we talk why don't we why don't we back up a little bit you are a trx or are v trx traveler is that right yes that is correct yes how did that start um well it started um you know, I was I was just a um, a little lad. Uh, still, I'm a little lad uh, working in London uh, through my twenties, and I think you know, like like most people in the big cities, uh, hitting the hitting the sort of the gym and um, that obsession with uh, with fitness and wanting to change one's body and get fitter, look better, and be healthier. Um, sort of was instilled in me, you know, from the get go, right through school, from being a teen. But it sort of um, it became a bit of a blessing and a curse um, because. As much as I loved, you know, I absolutely loved going to the gym, possibly too much. Um, you know, I started to feel like I kind of started to live in there a bit. And when you when you're working in London as well, because um, originally I started out in advertising um, before I sort of moved into the, the fitness world. You know, you're working long hours and then you have this need of I have to go to the gym. Um, and I, it, that that's what sort of became a little bit of a problem for me because um, I, I couldn't feel like I could ever be away from a gym. And um, if I was away from it for a bit too long, um, I didn't feel myself. I felt like I couldn't be myself. Possibly even felt like I didn't look myself, you know, uh, which is a really strange sort of mental battle to have in your head because it's, uh, you know, you're supposed to go to the gym to, um, to, 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 to relieve maybe stress and come away feeling more elated. But, um, mm -hmm. you know, I'd often go in and, and compare myself to others uh, quite a lot. Uh, my focus was external, very external. Um, it was more about how looking as though I could lift heavier and um, look, I, I guess, in essence, trying to look more impressive rather than actually um, taking a step back and, and focusing on on 
internally how it feels um and you know internal goals um i guess my my goals sort of drifted to um ex externally what was going on in the environment um so that then um you know that was that was a sort of little um little battle that i think went on but i didn't even really realize you know you just kind of crack on with it um and then the, there was the other point of um as all 20 year olds do i love to travel and backpack it was you know my dream was to have to gain more cultural awareness to uh to experience parts of the world but because I, I always wanted to be near a gym I felt I had to be I kind of couldn't really feel like I could do that um and then I heard um Ben Palowski a uh, fantastic bodybuilder almost a, a, tr a true inspiration to me a bit of a, a yogi bod bodybuilder he, he calls himself um and I always remember the line it was about nine years ago now and he said um uh, your muscle doesn't know what you're holding um, all it knows is the contraction and tension that you can place upon it through a range of motion. And all of a sudden, just this light bulb thing hit me. And it was like, well, if it doesn't know what I'm holding, and it is more about the internal feeling, in essence, the mind to muscle connection, why the hell am I in a gym in London? They're quite small, <laughs> surrounded by um, uh, a lot of guys, um, often with egos, uh, with loud music often having to wait a long time to use machines and stuff. And why am I coming away out of this feeling more stressed than when I went in? <laughs> so um, eventually I just got, you know, I achieved some some goals and I started coaching um, sort of in the gym. So, you know, the usual kind of um, personal trainer route, I guess. Um, but then it, after I got, got to 27, 28, I was just I had enough of London. I, I was done with it. You know, I can really grind you down. I'm, I'm sure you, know, you, you guys yourself know about big cities and what it can do. And I'm sure your listeners do as well. It can, you know, it can take its toll on you as much as you can love it. You can hate it as well. Um, and I just wanted to break out of the bubble. So I, I got a backpack and I just went, screw it. And at 26, 27, um, I'm 33 now, 34 now, um, I put the backpack on packed in a TRX, packed in a resistance band, and I thought, I'm going to go for it. And the journey started there, and it, it gradually progressed into what is now, I believe, you know, TRX, TRX training within your own space is not just can be physically beneficial, but it can be extremely mindful um, and extremely beneficial for mental health as well, because it's, it's you know, aside from... Um, the typical things you'd expect being able to save on costs of gym and save on um, maybe time as well you know train in your own space in your own time in your own environment when you want on your rules and having this internal focus feeling what the muscle you know feels like to take it through its ranges of motion internally focus and mind to muscle on the, the violent contractions you can create the the stresses and the stretches um, it, it, it becomes, you know, what is meditation? Meditation is a, is a form of focusing on one thing for an extended period of time. The TRX training not only for me became physical, but extremely mental uh, well-being as well. And the fact that um, I could then do it all around the world, uh, any, anywhere, on a beach, in a house, um, in a garage, park, a building site, you know, on the side of the Himalayan mountains, um, it, uh, it, it changed everything and it made it gave it gave me essentially fitness freedom um and i didn't feel anchored because uh, i felt like i could take the gym on the road with me um and then it that's how it then began um you know my, my real passion became in into bodybuilding with the trx essentially which i know sounds daft it sounds stupid what do you mean bodybuilding with the trx like <laughs> you're, you're an idiot uh, and you know i'm not trying to be the, the biggest bodybuilder or anything like that i just like to sort of create a body that i feel happy and comfortable in um and i like to help people do that as well um and um, yes, that is, that is how I then started um, to, to, to train people and change this mindset of just, um, I think a lot of people, when they use a TRX, they just, just move. And for me, it's all about muscle centric exercise, not movement exercise. You know, it's, it's, it's the violent contraction of the muscle that causes the movement, not just moving with the TRX. Um, and yeah, that, then that is, that is my, journey into how i became the trx traveler <laughs> sorry quite long-winded long i apologize it's uh, i'm a Geord geordie from the north of england and we tend to rub it on a lot <laughs> so that's the point of a that's the point of a podcast uh thank you <laughs> thank you for your story it's actually it's it feels obviously fitness centric but it, it does sort of speak to a larger sort of more general idea of like a lot of kids grow up with, oh, this is how my life is supposed to go. I'm supposed to get this job. I'm supposed to live in this town. I'm supposed to do this or whatever. 
And it really seems like now what came first? Like, did you realize you wanted to break out of your job or did you realize you wanted to break out of your gym <laughs> and how did one lead, in, lead into the other? Yeah, that's a really good point. Um, I think they, I think, I think they both maybe job and gym were, were both a little bit of an anchor in themselves. Um, but funny enough, when I, I think maybe the, the gym more so, cause I even remember, you know, when I used to go on holiday, I'd be, I'd, I'd sort of have to, make sure there's a gym close by or, or make sure that, you know, over oh, the holidays, two weeks, well, you know, I have to, I have to do some form of training within that two weeks on the holiday, you know, it's, um, and it, you'd, you'd often go away a bit more stressed, worrying about how you're going to work out on the holiday. Uh, then, then, and you'd feel more relaxed coming back because you know you were going to need your gym again. Um, so yeah, it was, it was that. And, and honestly, a massive, massive passion in traveling. Um, well, specifically backpacking, you know, just, um, you know, I'm just a, I'm a little, little, little slum dog from the north, the northeast of England, um, and you know, living out of a backpack with sort of minimal stuff was, was something that appealed to me, and it, and it, it changed my, my life, you know, um, and, and yeah, having the ability to take that um, fitness on the road with me through that was amazing, and it, it you know, what's even funnier is it's, um, it, it, exercise translates like language barriers. I remember I was in Cuba. And uh, I went out of the hostel on a morning and I went to this park and I mean, pretty dodgy park, if I'm honest. But when you sort of get into that backpack, <laughs> backpack and style, you, you don't really sort of take that in. But now I look back, I think, yeah, that was dangerous. Um, and this uh, this guy, this Cuban guy um, looked like a gangster um, came up to me as I was um, training with the TRX. And I thought, that's it. Like, I thought, you know, I'm done. But the, but the worst I've got is an elastic band and the TRX. If he's going to take it, it's not me. He's gonna, just going to take that. So it's cool. Um, but he, and he had a pit bull as well, right? This, this massive pit bull. Um, so you can imagine Cuban guy in a vest, like it looks like some sort of Grand Theft Auto. And he's this little white kid sort of just in his, in his, in his park trying to work out. And he came up to me and he, he tied the dog up and he just, he just kind of like gestured, can I have a go? And I was like, yeah, absolutely. And we did a 45 minute workout together. I kid you not, the, the dog was tied up for 45 minutes and we did a 45 minute workout together. And that was one of quite a few different scenarios. You know, I used, I used to give away my TRXs to the, to the Mexico kids or leave them hanging in parks and stuff um, to just, um, for, for, the, um, for them to use because, you know, they get fascinated and they come and work out with you. And, yeah, it's amazing. It's just, if you leave them up, it's it's amazing what, what develops, and you watch it over a couple of weeks. Um, so so yeah, it's it's you know it, it then becomes not just just exercise, but a, a sort of a, a way to cross cultures as well and and engage. <laughs> That's crazy. The story of me goosebumps. Well, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hope my mom doesn't listen to this because she will. Be pretty oh. pissed. <laughs> Wow, was that the sketchiest of the 30, 32 countries? How, what, what are we working on? How many countries are there in the? Oh, God. Oh, 400, 200. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a lot. I mean, Ish. hey, Alexa. <laughs> so, is that the sketchiest of the 32 that you've been to? Um, I, I wouldn't say sketchiest. I mean, that, that specific moment might have been a bit sketchy. Um, but the, um, I, you know, all, all of South America um, is. is apart from sort of Venezuela um, pretty much uh, had my pop got my paws in um, beautiful absolutely incredible you know country magnificent cultures um, and uh, yeah that's probably uh, can't think off the very top of my head but that's probably one of the can I just kind of swear on this sure <laughs> Go for it. oh yeah that's probably the time I shit my pants the most um, <laughs> and he well, he started to come up with me <laughs> Um, but it's all part of the experience you know and the workout was great like he got a pump uh, so i was psyched uh, he was psyched um, you know. <laughs> i think that's probably one of the biggest um hindrances at, at least certainly for me getting the trx is, is very similar to what you described it was it was you know i thought oh i want to work out my you know bicep for ease of the easiest examples i want to work out my bicep i need a dumbbell of this x weight you know but then doing the trx you're like wow this is working as hard as i would be working only it's weird because my elbows are up here now instead of you know <laughs> so can you sort of pitch people on <laughs> you don't need the exact thing you need to get the same pump and especially with bodybuilding i feel like people you know people who want to um body weight exercises yoga exercises it, it seems like sort of a uh, 
people think of it as, oh, you know, that's just to lean down or I'm just, you know, I'm not a yoga, yeah. I'm not a yoga girl, you know, so why am I doing that type of workout? But I mean, you get a serious pump with it. <laughs> with the- yeah, totally. And I, and I, I'll tell you what it, what it does, right? What it immediately eradicates is ego. You can't, you don't, you don't get a, a guy, a guy TRX with ego. <laughs> you, just, you know, you just don't get it because you can't do it. And, and why is that? Because you can't pile plates on either side or anything like that. And, and you can't sort of stand up and get ready to brace and, and take the big sort of, you know, roar and grr. Um, you, you, you have to, <laughs> you have, you have to, uh, you, you can if you want to. <laughs> you, can, you certainly can if you want to <laughs> but you have to focus on technique right it has to come down to technique and it has to come down to slowing movements down and really focus them um and i think once you then realize right i i haven't got the that, let's call dumbbells um you know they're the tools you know just like a trx is a tool and yes of course having a range of weights of dumbbells is an easier tool to look at as progression and things like that um but often it can be too easy because it can just be right i'm just going to pick up the 15s and curl them oh now i'm going to do the 18s and curl them whereas when you look at a trx for example using using your curls as an example you can't do that so you have to think right how can i execute this um perfectly or, or practice executing it perfect to get the most results so then it comes into things like you know, you're thinking about your biomechanics and full full ranges of motion. So this is where I've learned a lot from mentorship programs where I've studied from bodybuilders. Um, ben Flasky is one of them. Alicia Gowan is fantastic, um, f- fantastic um, athletes, competitors. And so, so you look at the TRX and you think, right, how am I going to do this bicep curl? Well, I know that I have to fully extend. And at the bottom, I should contract my tricep because contracting my tricep will lengthen my bicep. So I'm beginning from a, 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 you know, a full range of motion. I know that then I have to, you know, obviously curl up, and contract as hard as I can. And then I have to um, uh, twist my wrist, lift my pinky up to uh, supinate it up to even get the, the peak, you know, and really work up, up on that. And when you then start breaking every single exercise down and focusing on how to isolate that muscle and how to use the TRX most effectively to get the most out of it to train the muscle, you start ticking a lot of boxes. You start ticking big ranges of motion you start ticking you know really good technique um and i you know i, I for, for me that was then all right well who's who's the best people to learn from and look at to to find this best technique um because i haven't got any weights it was bodybuilders and 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 that's when i started to take mentorship programs and i started to read furiously all the autobiographies of um uh, frank zane and um, mike mensa you know all, all just absorb multitudes of information about uh, and bodybuilding which when i was in the gym didn't do it once because what did i do i just try to pick the heaviest weight up mm. you know so it, it can cause that switch in mentality and it's almost a force switch um so i think that's super interesting um and even you know the same the same with resistance bands um it's exactly the same premise you, you've got to you got to look at the one muscle you want to target, how you can isolate it and how you can practice perfect technique to cause the stresses, the tension through those ranges of motion. Um, and it, it, you, be, you become so nitpicky at that, you know, you, you really nitpick your technique. Um, and it's, it's, it's great. Even now, after six, seven years of just, just training with TRX to try and essentially build muscle. Um, even now, I still every, every, every session and I'm I like, you know, really slow it all down and, and, and um, and that's another thing as well. You can't rush it. You know, you really have to pay attention to your, to your negative phases. You're, you're slow. You know, I'm a massive advocate of at least four seconds slow negative phases, you know, one or two seconds up and really, really powerful. A lot of people call me out on my coaching vids. I always, they always say, will you stop saying squeeze? Because apparently in my vids, I, I always, I'm always, at the, I'm always at the top with a TRX and like squeeze, squeeze. It's like, it's became my sort of word that, that a lot of my clients have branded me with, um, and even when they see, I do a lot of videos without sound, um, just just purely because sometimes I don't always have the environment set up to be able to record sound and, and stuff. But I try and sort of help as much as I can in, um, you know, the silent uh, sort of silent dictation and, and techniques. Uh, and um, they even say to me, I, I can see in your head, you're thinking squeeze at that point. <laughs> and they're not wrong. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, it really then focuses on, on that top contraction squeeze. And uh, I'm, a, so I'm a big advocate of the squeeze, the violent, violent muscle contraction squeeze. <laughs> well, what I have trouble with is that, like you said, the dumbbells are easy, right? Because you can go from 15 to 18. Um, 
what really motivates me in the gym and makes it fun is gamifying my workout. And so being able to see those numbers move up and Mm -hmm. yes, focusing on, um, good form too, but, but really like that makes every workout a win because I can see those numbers change. So how are you with the TRX, even if it isn't gamifying your workout, but like making sure you're progressively overloading, is it just like paying attention to how sore you are the next day? And then that's the win for the workout or, or how do you negotiate that? Yeah, totally. And I think that's, you know, that's probably the most smartest and sort of biggest question with TRX training is, well, how do you increase the intensity of progressive overload? It's as simple, it's as, simple as that. Um, and there's the obvious ones of, you know, well, you can increase the reps so you can just aim to do more reps or, you can stand at a bit more of a of an angle to increase intensity. Um, so if you've got a, a a mat, a workout mat that has some markings on, you can you can you know each each time you step up to it, you know you're at marking ten or marking nine or marking eight or marking seven. There's a few of them kicking around on on the old eBay and Amazon. Um, so you can record that. I, I'm I'm very data driven kind of like like you Ali. You know you you like to gamify a bit. So I, I gamify in terms of I mark down exactly where I was standing and what the length was at. And and that I mean that's taking it a bit too far to get in a bit date way way data analytical, but it's fun to do. Um, so so yeah, there's there's them those obvious ones, the the high reps, the angle that you're standing at. But for me, it's always always been about the, the mind to muscle and and really. I don't think, I mean, if you look at, and, and, you know, I'm sure there's many people that may, may correct me if I'm wrong here, but even from what I understand, the top bodybuilders in the world, right, have a mind to muscle connection to contract a muscle violently and powerfully only about 40 or 50% of its capability. They're the top ones in the world, right? Only can only do it 40, 50% of its capability. There's still a huge amount of mind to muscle connection and practice to learn even for the top better builders in the world to get it up to hundred percent. Right. So I, I think that, that always practicing the mind to muscle and the technique and that connection, that squeezing and, and feeling and internalizing and feeling your body work is for us as, as amateurs is, is, is limitless, you know? So there, there's always that. Um, um, it, it, when it's, when it gets to the point of saying, well, and, and of course this varies over different levels, you know, for me, I now just push to failure and I make sure that, um, I, I train, you know, I'll, I'll hit between eight to 10 reps, but then I'll take it to what I call complete absolute failure. So I'll fail on the concentric. Once the concentric starts to fail, I'll um, do partials to really fail the concentric. I'll then hold it for isometrics until the isometric fails. And then at the very end, I'm forced to fail on the eccentric. And that, you know, that's uh, is ex- essentially taking it to failure. Um, so that it can build up to that level. But obviously as a beginner, there's not, it's not necessary to, I would say to do that, you know, I guess when you, when you, well, obviously your body's adapting more and more and to your point, Ali, you're looking for ways to intensify direct training more. It then becomes taking it to points of failure. Um, and that's over the past sort of year, maybe not even, maybe almost, uh, yeah, probably about eight months I've, I've been doing that type of training and I've seen probably the, the biggest gains that I've, I've experienced um, by doing that. And it's, um, not that I want to do a shameless plug, but it's why I created my latest program, um, which is all around full body um, intensity tech training and taking muscles to absolute fatigue with TRX train. Um, Cause I was just, yeah, uh, shocked. And, um, and I, and I say that, but I, I, you know, obviously I'm by no means not, not the biggest guy uh, in the room by any means. I just, you know, I just really enjoy this and I love, you know, seeing my body change and, 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 and seeing that adaption. Um, so you can't com- you, you, you can't compete with weights at all. They are fundamentally 100% a better tool, and you know a gym is a great place. Um, it's just you can't take them to Belize Island and do it on a beach, unless you, know, you could. But right. um, big backpack. <laughs> you could, but you can't. <laughs> so how so how you're going to fail your how often are you failing on a on a move every every exercise yeah. of every workout within a workout and then how often are you working out recovering yeah. between those failures T- totally totally so i don't on average it's about two or three workouts a week sometimes just two because i, I need that much time to recover and then wow. if i'm but i'd call that the bodybuilding um, um and again this is just I, I experiment a lot so this is my kind of you know it's it's working very well for me but the, the full body um uh, normally they average around um, two sets per, per body part, maybe um, I think there's five or six um, different, no, six or seven different exercises 
uh, for each 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 part of the body uh, two sets and yeah pushing pushing to failure and when i mean failure absolute failure so across the three strength ranges you know the concentric eccentric and isometric it's not just about just found the concentric so yeah it can some of them some of them destroy me and it takes three or four days um and i had a i had a, a lad um on the um uh the little um our, our little fitness freedom facebook group which is just where uh, we all chat about trx and talk about the programs and the training and, and he was quite an, an advanced lad and he, he he was getting stuck into the intensity program and he, he did say to me he was like jesus like i I, it's taken me three or four days to recover. Is this, is this right? And uh, I was like, yeah, believe it or not. I know it's shocking, but yeah, it is possible to push yourself that hard with a TRX and it can take that long. Um, but I'm very much of, of the opinion of listen to your body. You know, it's, you don't, you don't step back up into that, to that, I call it the, the TRX church, the mindful TRX church, uh, your, your TRX church, and you don't step back up into it until you're ready. Um, so, and I love cycling. I love road cycling stuff. So, in, in between recovery, you know, I'll, I'll sort of I'll do some road cycle and things like that, you know, some form of cardio. So, so yeah. But I've also then, you know, got programs um, where you know it's just the, your typical bodybuilding: uh, push, legs, pull, split, and that's like you know, um, it could be a five or six days a week training. But obviously, it's not pushing to to failure um, each time. So, it's yeah, it it amazed me when I started doing this. And it was Mike, it was Mike Mensa's. You know, after reading Mike Mensa's book, I think I challenge anyone to read read his autobiography. Um, and then not try this this high intensity to fail, you know, because he does sell it very well. And I've always known about it, and I've always thought I'm going to do it. I'm going to give it a try. And now I'm absolutely loving it. Absolutely loving it. <laughs> Seems efficient. Like you're just going nuts for a short amount of time, and then recovering the whole week. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And you get more time, exactly, yeah. to, to do things as well. And you know, it does give you a bit more freedom. But you know, each each to their own. It works for me right now. Um, I used to think the push pull legs six days a week worked for me um but now i feel this does um and i've um I, I don't know max ali can you attest to this but i've definitely have been a, a, a sort of my, a victim to myself of overtraining uh, a lot before thinking more more is better <laughs> you know um so so it's certainly the full body kind of workout really sort of makes you take a step back and be like oh no it's it's not necessarily better <laughs> rest, yeah. rest it's funny to it this past year, especially I've been working out at home a lot. I mean, I've worked out at home predominantly. I've always sort of also had a gym mm -hmm. as a backup, but especially this past year working out at home, I'm always like, oh, I'm bored. I should just, I should just do a, I'll just do another workout. <laughs> and so then I'm like, man, why is my elbow so sore? Oh, it's because I did 500 push ups today for no reason, you know? Mm -hmm. um, we, we talked, we had a bodybuilder on here a long time ago, and he mentioned he was very, very sort of adamant about mind muscle and he's not picking up a weight he's flexing this and the weight moves and so that that it was very it's it's interesting to hear you talk about because that really felt like the the overlap with the trx mm -hmm. i i don't know how much i'm lifting or or you know what i mean i don't know how much i'm curling but this feels pretty hard i would say i'm guesstimating 80 percent as hard as i could go is yeah is that how you sort of do it have you ever worked out with like um i forget what it's called reps in reverse reserve or i think this is 80 percent of my this feels like 80, or is, that, is that how you do it or do you sort of do it like that and also the other thing is i chalked <laughs> on the ground where my feet are and then i'm like all right my toes are here all right great now i'm doing this oh and now i'm here probably yeah. i just forget I, I forget where i am and i'm like yeah that's probably that's probably a... <laughs> <laughs> that's probably right there oh probably there yeah, yeah that's probably right there <laughs> no yeah yeah no, totally Totally. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I do, I do sort of advise that RPE uh, kind of in reps and reserves for the programs, but I always sort of say that, call it just like creative freedom. You can't, like, it, you know, it took me years just to get a TRX. It's like you just got to kind of get it and practice, and and once you sort of get it and you feel this creative freedom, it's not going to come it straight away. You just get a sense of like, I just know where to stand. I just know the intensity. I just know where to feel because you're just, you're much more internal with your body, you know? And it sounds, mm -hmm. it does sound daft that, and, and don't get me wrong. I'm all about the hard correlated facts and data, um, hundred percent. And I love it. I love recording everything, but I, I, I do feel, and I know a, a lot of people would back me on this, that I can just step up to a, a TRX now. And if you said to me, right, I want you to go balls to the wall, like, you know, RP of nine, go for it and i could just stand and i'd know where to for 
the bicep curl, for example, I'd approximately know where to stand to do that. If you said to me, right, go at five, I'd kind of approximately know where to stand at. I think it's just a simple matter of just experience, you know, and practice um, in, in terms of that. Um, so, yeah, it's, you know, I, I look, I, I, there's every element or, or, or sort of um, a key point or key technique that we do within bodybuilding and fitness and stuff is, is what I translate. I try to translate within in a TRX, you know, um, and people come to me and they say, Oh, have you got any cardio and stuff for a TRX? And like, are you doing any HIIT workouts and all this sort of stuff? And I just quite simply say no, because it's, for me, it's, it's, there's much better tools to increase your VO2 capacity than a TRX. You know, you're kind of not putting good time efficiency to, to your goal. And, and for me, my, my interest and what I love helping people do is essentially change the body a little bit, you know, transform the body a little bit, gain a little bit of strength, gain a little bit of muscle, increase a bit of functional fitness, strength, balance out um, um, sort of um, weaknesses and, and things like that, and do it wherever you bloody want. If you want to do it in your garage, get in your garage. If you want to do it in your shed, you, you, you know, your wife's kicked you out in your shed, get in the shed and blast out some carrot stuff, you know. Um, so, yeah, but the, 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 uh, to your point, uh, Max, I, the, the, I, I love that he's, um, that, that you sort of said that, and it's, it's not the way. It's like, how much, how much weight should I use? It doesn't fucking matter because your muscle doesn't know. You know, if, if you can pick up a, an eight and, and curl it, but you're just kind of moving and you're just going through the motion and curling it, compared to if you pick up a two or a four and you're, you're putting your mind inside of your muscle and you are telling it, I want, I'm going to violently contract you bicep i'm going to bloody van contract you and you've really internalized that and you pair that with perfect form and technique i would 100 percent argue that that is 100 percent better than just just going through movement you know it's muscle centric movement that's that's i think the winner personally and from my experience <laughs> how are you fine you... how... sorry go on Ali. oh no go ahead i was just going to ask max how, how he's finding the trx training you know like what because uh, I, I always find it interesting when I want to say this to people does, does it have you noticed this yourself with it or you know do you see, or see it as something you just you know just do or, or do you kind that's of that's almost exactly what happened because I was I was I was comparing it to if I stand here or if my feet are here and my arms doing this this feels like I'm curling 30 pounds okay great well that's pretty much where i should start okay great okay now in the second set i'm going to stand here that's this would be 35 or something like that so it was definitely what you're describing is like the more advanced i feel like i started sort of five steps behind <laughs> what you're yeah. describing because i was like how do i do this i have no idea what i'm doing i know it should be pretty hard and i'm going to try to do two or three sets and i should fail ish around 10 reps ish, you know? So I was like, okay, if I stand here and then that's going to be there. And then, and that's sort of how I intuitively did it, I guess. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and then, and then, yeah, like little things like putting the X's on the ground helped a lot. Uh, I, I like measured one foot everywhere or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, and it just, that's, it really, to me before it felt like I was taking a silks class or um if you know <laughs> you know what that is or, or uh you know i was just like trx was just like a flexibility tool or really it was just something that's like look kind of funny for the gym to have so that the gym could look cool like oh yeah we also have this thing nobody uses it but we also have it it's super cool yeah. but then once i was sort of that was like my only you know i have a couple of dumbbells but that was like my main uh piece of equipment then i was like oh wow this is i really have to sit down and figure out how to use this but there was you know, there were a lot of possibilities. And, and like I said, like a lot of stuff translated, okay, this feels like a, you know, it's, again, this is a stupid metaphor, but <laughs> this feels like a 30 pound dumbbell. If I stand mm -hmm. here and do this and I put my arms here, great. Mm -hmm. Now I'll take a, a half step forward and now it feels like a forward. You know what I mean? That was sort of like my jumping off point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but it was cool. fun. I mean, and that sort of stemmed from, it also stemmed from um, not having access to heavy, heavy weights, you know? And sort of like everything sort of stemmed from me making or being mad that I couldn't squat heavy. And I'm like, yeah, I can do air squats, but I can do literally a million air squats. You know, I, that's, that's life. You're just standing up all the time. Uh, <laughs> and then, and then I was like, uh huh, hold on a second. How many one legged, like how many one legged pistol squats can I do? Zero. 
And then I was like, wow, like I can do, I don't have access to heavy weights to do a bench press. That's what I would like to do. I'd like to put a ton of weight on there, do six heavy reps and not be able to do a seventh. Mm -hmm. All I can do now is a push up. Wah, wah, boo hoo. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, well, how many one arm push ups can I do? You know, one, two, mm -hmm. you know? And so then how many push ups can I do if I'm like, all my weights on my right hand, I'm sort of helping with my left hand, you know, then I can sort of mess around with it. And then I can sort of get that. Obviously it's not as easy as having a bench press and it's not as easy yeah. as having plates and barbell yeah. or whatever, but it was that same idea of, I want to exhaust this muscle group as hard as I can. Mm -hmm. The only way I've ever known how to do it is with a bunch of heavy plates and a barbell in a in a basement gym uh <laughs> but i can sort of i was like feeling like oh wow if i do a one-arm push-up that's almost as hard as doing mm. you know my heavy heavy barbell mm. oh maybe i can mess around with that and that's that really was what translated to the to the trx it was like this is this is making it that one half step easier so it's actually doable really yeah, yeah. you know i can't really do a a whole workout of one arm push-ups <laughs> yet yeah, uh, but i <laughs> but that was really sort of how it that's really how it like translated to me and i've tried to explain it to people and they're like yeah whatever i'm just gonna get i'm just gonna get my dumbbells <laughs> <laughs> i can only imagine your job must be incredibly annoying for that very reason <laughs> yeah i get challenged a lot <laughs> a lot <laughs> um but how interesting is that right though max so what you're essentially telling me is that you're exploring your own personal biomechanics for what fits the purpose like that that's that is what is more beautiful than exploring your own biomechanics and your own body to find out exactly what is working for you and that's you know a bit of creative fitness um fun that you can have with the trx and uh, pretty much you know have to um and your squat thing's a really good example right um i know uh i know quite a lot of um um power lifters and and uh, some, some fantastic um athletes and uh, just one of my mates who uh, he's, he's, he's plays semi-professional uh, rugby, and um, I actually met him um, when I was uh, when I was when I was travelling, uh, Kiwi lad, and uh, he was just like you know uh, you know he'd look at me, look down at me, <laughs> a long way down at me, and yeah. uh, it'd be like <laughs> and be like uh, you you want me to do some DRX bodyweight squats, and I'd be like yeah 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 I do I do, and he's like this is just gonna like be nothing to me, it's gonna be like feather. So, you know, he goes, he grabs it and he starts doing them and he's pumped them out. And yeah, he's going for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds. And he's just like, yeah, whatever, this is nothing. And I say to them, right, now let's break this down. So let's just stop. Now, how about if you really focus on isolating your legs now, rather than using your entire legs, right? Let's squat and focus just on your quads. So when you're going down, I want you to slow everything right down. So I want you to take four seconds uh, down and I want you to... Uh, when you get at the bottom and the very bottom, I want you to contract your hamstrings. So your, your antagonistic muscles are stretching the quads. And as you come back up, I want you to take one or two seconds. However, throughout this entire time of this, this, this squat, I want you to be constantly pushing your feet outwards against the floor. Constantly. It's constantly pushing your feet out. It's constantly, constantly, constantly. You struggle to get the 10. All right. And now if you don't, if you don't believe me or anyone doesn't believe me, try it for yourself. Um, and you are just purely by pushing your feet outwards, and I learned this, this isn't just, just me. This is, I learned this from um, a, a bodybuilder uh, in one of the programs um, uh, to, to, you know, to, to, to hit the target and a lot of the outer, outer quad, uh, the sweep. Um, and it, it puts all the isolation, all the load, all the effort onto individual muscles. So instead, when you're doing a bodyweight squat, instead of bringing in your glutes, your hams, all your quads, you know, um, momentum, you're, you're isolating and that's the key to trx training it's isolating locking the body in complete stone and not moving unless the muscle that you specifically want to train and isolate causes that movement and that's that's where it gets you know to to, to change and to change in mindset and to change and this that sudden light bulb moment oh shit okay you know yeah <laughs> This is exactly the opposite of what I expected in this conversation. I thought it would be like, <laughs> well, you know, you got to use your core in every movement and it's going to be total body. And like, you're balancing on a BOSU ball and shaking around. And instead you're like, nope, one muscle focus. This just, I'm yeah. mind blown. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, uh, it was, it's, it, yeah, it's just fascinating though. Right. It's like, and it almost to your point of gamifying Ali, right how can you gamify it even more 
oh, I want to isolate my, I mean, you can't, you can't isolate your, one of the tiny little muscles on your back that comprises the web of back muscles. But you can mm-hmm. sort of say, I really want to isolate my outer quad. You know, I want to make my legs look a bit thicker. How can I specifically just target that quad sweep? How can I just isolate that one muscle and challenge the hell out of it? How can I break it down so much that just that grows, you know? And people, I think, when they hear a squat, don't think that. They just think squat. They don't think, what am I using at squat? What do I want to grow from this squat? And that's something you have to do with the TRX. You have to take it all. It's like I was saying before, you have to take everything else out the window and focus on the technique and what you want to do. Um, and to your point of the pistol squats, Max, you know, if you want to train the, the full quads, you know, when you're doing the pistol squats, you, you lean leaning forward just a little bit more just to keep that weight in it. Are you, are you contracting the hamstring at the bottom? You know, are you, are you getting to the very top and squeezing the living daylights out of it for, you know, one or two seconds? And all those little things, those little steps sort of add up to, you know, quite big, um, big results. Now there are, to be fair, there are sort of full body core aspects to it. You do, mm-hmm. you put your feet in the straps and you do a push up, or you put one foot in the strap and you do a push up and the other foot is floating. Do you, do you do any of that? Or is that, do you feel like that's more um, sort of, you keep that stuff separate? It's not something that I, I, I guess, yeah, sorry, I'm, at different levels, yeah, I think you know, as as uh, towards a sort of beginner and leading into intermediate, I think um, you know, there's there's definitely a place for stabilizing um, holds and movements that are a bit more full body, where you are focusing on sort of actual movement, um, not just isolating that one uh, muscle. But for my interest and for my argument, I'd say really you want to be sort of you know saying well what do i want to build i want to build my chest what's mm-hmm. the most effective way to, to to do that you know um so i certainly think there's room for it absolutely but i think only to only to a point you know what how are you how are you going to really progress when a loads um a load and a weight is 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 evenly displaced across a lot of different muscles you know and each one's only working 10 20 percent as opposed to loading just one muscle to eight up to 80 percent which will really push it you know um, mm-hmm. so I think it's, again, it comes down to obviously the level, um, of what you're starting in at and just effective training. Um, so yeah, I certainly, certainly wouldn't rule it out. It seems that a lot of your training and when you're saying like telling people to squeeze that you're training them, that mind muscle connection, how much of it is training them like the mindfulness that you talked about in the beginning, or is that more of like your personal experience and doesn't really come into your coaching? No, it, it definitely comes in at a bit of a later stage. Um, uh, so I'll tell you what, I'll tell you, I'll tell you how, I'll tell you my, my little, so my little routine on a morning, my morning TRX routine, which is untouchable, right? No matter where I am, what I'm doing, whoever's there, even if, you know, my, my, my um, better half, even if she's like, look at me, you know, I'm, I've, I've, I've got the sexy attire on. Are we doing this? If, if it's around my untouchable morning, I'm like, don't know. I think I've got to go and do my 10 minutes of untouchable, you know, TRX. Work. I'll be right back. <laughs> but I was <wish, laughs> straight back. Um, uh, so, so I, you know, I go in and um, I, I sit uh, below the TRX and I close my eyes just for five minutes, five to 10 minutes. And I do a uh, box, box breathing. So um, four or five seconds in through the nose, hold for four or five seconds, out for four or five seconds. And I just try and focus just my mind and just concentrating on those, like a ticker, you know, just the numbers going up. Um, and uh, just every, every thought that comes in, you know, the usual what, what you would hear people say. Um, and I'm by no means an expert. This is, I just find this personally helps me a lot. Um, you know, a lot of thoughts come in, a lot of come out. And after five or 10 minutes of doing this box breathing exercise, I then open my book and, you know, I go to town on everything that I'm grateful for uh, in my life, all the, all the little things and, you know, uh, what I want to sort of um, do today, you know, um, um, great things I'd like to achieve and all that sort of stuff. Uh, just a little bit of journaling, gratitude journaling. And then I then take that same premise, that same gratitude, that same, you know, clear mind. And I go straight into then the TRX training um, and I begin to warm up and I take that same internal focus. How am I feeling? And, and I then take it in and, and it goes as far as when it gets sort of really advanced. I try and only breathe through my nose um, for the entire training session. Uh, you know, multitude, multitude of uh, reasons. Uh, obviously, when you're doing things like pistol squats and, and stuff like that, it's, it becomes pretty much impossible. You know, you have to. Mm. By the end, you're like, 
okay <laughs> and you just you know, <laughs> like give in <laughs> but for, for the majority of the training session um, and that is another incredible way to increase intensity you know for any sim any exercise you think is simple i challenge you just to breathe through your nose and do it and you watch how much more it, it challenges the cardiovascular uh, system and how much more you can improve by doing it <laughs> so i'm uh, sure our swimmer audience is like yes <laughs> told you <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah it's certainly that i chat a lot of people and, and it's interesting who the different types of people that, that I, I chat to and who are you know i'm almost blessed and lucky enough to chat with because some of them come from backgrounds that are so highly experienced and in tune with mindfulness and, and breathing and all that sort of stuff and that's why they then take a passion into trx because they just like to do it in their own space with that breathing with that mindset and it, it, categorically i'd probably say 89 percent of people come back to me and say i understand what you mean about it being a bit meditative and a little bit more you know um sort of this is my time this is me this is about me feeling my body and um so, so yeah it, it is um it's just like you know i don't want to overload uh, people with all my thoughts and crap uh, all at once just little bits of crap at a time and... <laughs> no 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 we're asking that's the whole <laughs> <laughs> well do you ever miss the the gym at all you don't want to like maybe while you're waiting for the squat rack turn around and talk to the bro behind you and smell his <laughs> sweat and one of these <laughs> <laughs> yeah. just, just stroke the rack feel a bar yeah <laughs> i forgot i forgot what you feel like <laughs> uh, I, I do um you know i'm i'm only a i'm only a, 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 a small lad and when i was in uni and stuff and young I, and i used to play um, rugby and i used to do um i used to love kind of power lifting style so i got quite strong for my size in deadlifting and squatting and i think once you've tasted heavy deadlifting and heavy squatting and heavy benching you've always got a thirst for it you know it's like <laughs> you, 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 so there's always that i'm back back of mind but again I, I used to get injured so much you know i was i was always in pain there was always something wrong there was always something imbalanced my, my um uh, rotator cuffs were always buggered my hips were always hurting now for years for the past four or five years i've never had an injury through trx training i'm more flexible i can you know i don't have any clicks and clacks i don't have any aches and pains um so, so, you know, the one thing I, I would say I do miss is deadlifting, just heavy deadlifting. If I'm being totally honest, yeah, I do, I do miss that, but I'm willing to let it go for because of how poor my form used to be and because of how sort of more ego driven I would lift rather than technique driven. <laughs> uh, well, speaking of that, I mean, are there anything, is there anything we can't do with the TRX? No, no. We've, 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 we've expressed our love for the TRX. We all have, obviously. Is there anything you can't yeah. do or is there anything you sort of need something else to do? Yeah, we, we've picked it up a little bit too much, haven't we? I think we need to <laughs> bring, it, bring, it back down, bring it back down a few levels. Um, I mean, yeah, you know, you can't, you can't do a strength training program for the TRX. You know, it's just, you just can't. Um, I, I would also say, you know, if you're really looking to do quality cardio and increase VO2 capacity, things like that. I wouldn't say you can do that um, either. Mm -hmm. um, it is very much, you know, f f I mean, functional fitness, um, a term that's thrown around quite a lot. Um, but I think because if you take away all this uh, muscle building, bodybuilding, and, and everything I've just chatted about to it, and you just look at a TRX and what you have to do, quite simply, it does it does take a lot of balance and a lot of stability, and you're losing using you are losing a lot of secondary muscles, and you are going through ranges that are natural to you because there's it's not guiding you, it's not you know you're you're pulling how you're going to pull within reason. Obviously, you want to pull with the best technique and things like that, but you're still a tiny little adjustments of the wrist and everything. You can make it all work for your biomechanics and your body, and I think that's that's pretty damn cool. Um, that's huge. And we talked to, um, uh, what is Chris's, uh, barbell, his funny looking barbell alley. Do you know what we're talking about? Duffin, his, um, his, uh, Chris Duffin's barbells. Yeah. <clears throat> he has this barbell that instead of going across like this, it has, so your wrist can sort of turn a little bit. Mm. And he was like, guys, oh, it's such a cool idea. You know, your, your wrist isn't locked into this way. Maybe your, your elbow doesn't work that way or blah, blah, blah. And I've noticed a couple of times if I'm, especially using barbells mm -hmm. 
you know, my, my wrist can hurt a little bit. And I know that if like just a little, you know, even a, a few degrees on either way would go a long way towards mm. not clicking or not having stuff pop or whatever. Yeah. Um, and that's definitely something I noticed. Yeah, uh, no, totally. And, and those little frustrating pops or that tiny little frustrating pain, it can throw you off the whole, you know, exercise because you just like, I can't stop focusing on that little bloody yeah. crack. Did I just tear my ACL again? No, no, it's totally fine. <laughs> Battle through. Yeah. What's the coolest looking move you can do on a TRX? What's like Why do we most... wait this long? That's the most important question we could have asked. I know. What do I do on Instagram to look at? <laughs> I mean, I probably can't do it. What's the most impressive thing you got? Uh, all right, I'm going to give you two examples. I'm going to give you one that's the most impressive sounding one, right? And I only know it's the most impressive sounding because it got the most views when I put it as a title. Um, but it, it, <laughs> it, 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 it is, it is, it is still true. Um, uh, and, I, and then I'll tell you what I think probably the most um, impressive visual one is. We'll call it the thumb stopper, the Instagram thumb stopper. It's like you know, you, you're sort of scrolling through and you see someone doing that with the TRX. It's like bloody hell. Um, <laughs> <laughs> got, got a funny story on, on that one too so the, the the one what i'd say sounds the most badass and sounds the most like oh i want to get myself some of that is the three finger bicep curl the three finger trx bicep curl and it's like hang on what, what the hell is that and my point to it my, my actual point to it was that it was all about um um encouraging people to twist the wrist at the top like pinky up to really hit the bicep peak so I said, right, focus on a three finger bicep curl, focus on curling the back, the, the, with the TRX with your um, little finger, uh, your middle finger and the, the finger in between that, your ring finger. And if you focus with those three fingers as you curl, you will naturally, you will naturally lead with your pinky up, right? And you'll hit the pit, oh, try weird. it, try it. So you're twisting, yeah. can you feel that? If you twist your wrist, can you feel a peak popping on the bicep there, guys? It's like yeah, a claw. <laughs> The three finger claw, we could call it. That might get even yeah, more views. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, that was kind of the, but it had a, it had a sort of technique premise behind it. And then, oh, without a shadow of a doubt, the most badass one is um, feet feet in the TRX. Work your way up, so you're in a handstand position. Yeah, like you know, almost vertical, but you're at quite an angle, and just bashing out some shoulder presses. And I actually, I did a vid of this um, uh, just to show off, you know did about three or four <laughs> but when I when I got to and I, I tried to go to failure I did go to failure and I got to the point where I kind of was like shaking and I'm pushing up and I'm just at the press-up position and I'm like fuck I haven't got the strength to get down I don't know how I'm <laughs> going to get down and I had to do like sort of a one-handed I don't I, I want to make it sound cool and sort of like you know run run DMX style sort of handstand sort of flip you know just some <laughs> badass music but I kind of had to do like a one hand and I just spun off and my legs went spinning and I flew into the tree, like collapsed down because it's hanging from a branch. And it made for some it made for some great fail and be real. Um, but I think that's <laughs> oh yeah. I mean you can't you can't beat that for looking pretty badass, you know. Uh, what what about that's you, Max? Do you think do you think that's a pretty good one? Uh I've tried it and I spun oh, exactly yeah. the way you were talking <laughs> about. Uh, I was because I was trying to do the most impressive one I've seen. Um uh, this girl I know did a hand, put her feet in the TRX, did a handstand pike. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so she's doing a handstand. Her legs are at a pike, mm -hmm. and then she does like a full split into a, a full handstand. Does that make oh, sense? Wow. Yeah, I know. So like, like her legs realize. were, her feet were together. Then they went wide, and then they went back again together as a handstand. Um, I think that's a little flexibility, first of all. So. <laughs> Maybe that's, let's just say that's the limiting factor. That's why I can't do it. <laughs> 100%. But only, yeah, only I tried the, um, I tried the uh, feet in the straps, walk up to a handstand and it was cool because you are, you look awesome and you're like, yeah, I'm here. And then if you don't very carefully get out of it, or if you spin in any way, the TRX just whips your feet around and like, it was pretty embarrassing, but uh, yeah, at least yeah. it didn't burn. I mean, a tree down. That was I, I feel you. Yeah, I mean, a tree brought me down. You know. <laughs> uh, yeah. No. No. I, I feel you. I do feel you. <laughs> Have you ever used rings? Gymnastic uh, rings? Not. Not really. Once or twice, but um, no, I haven't. And uh, a, a lot of people ask me, you know, what's what's better? Um, and again, my answer is just it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because it's all about like the contraction and 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 it it, it goes back to you know 
as long as you can do a good range of motion with your biomechanics and allows that and it then comes mm -hmm. down to placing you know your mind and the muscle and contracting with whatever tool you're using and um, however in, in, if you're talking about in terms of sort of actual gymnastic moves and isometric holds and that sort of stuff never used it but i would be i would be really keen to to try it out and, and see how it compares um because I, I did i did get some um some parallel bars so gymnastic bars because mm. i wanted to see uh through lockdown in, in lockdown I, I was just getting a bit bored of the constant TRX strains so i thought you know what i'm got, you know not being able to go outside and we were we have been quite restricted here in london um uh, and so i got some bars and i thought i'm gonna get some bars and i want to see if strength from trx training translates over um and i was actually quite shocked at how well it does you know to i couldn't do the full planche and stuff but i could you know i could do quite a lot of good tucks uh, i could do some sort of nice flows holding myself um so i was actually quite struck at how it transferred to strength because i've never i've never explored that i've never explored what you know where or how the the the, the strength side or, or, or muscle sort of adaption side of trx training and where it would translate into um, so that was a really interesting find that it, it, it was quite, yeah, gymnastic style movements. Granted, I was complete amateur and, um, you know, weren't as yeah. bad as I was expecting. Yeah. That, that, I think that's probably where people get the idea that the TRX is gymnastic or full body because the only thing they've ever seen comp comparatively is Olympics. Do doing an iron Olympic cross in the Olympics. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That does look can you bad. do a muscle up? You can't do a muscle up with a TRX, can you? No. No, I don't think you could. Does no. that exist? No. Never seen it. Never seen it. That could that could be the um that could be Maybe the truth on stopper. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it sounds like a challenge. Maybe it does. <laughs> well, cool. This has been awesome. Thank you so much for chatting with us. No, thank you. It, it's been an absolute pleasure. Like I say, I was um, I was very very honoured, um, and, and uh, yeah, I was quite taken back actually. Uh, got a bit emotional that you asked me on. So thank you very much. Uh, it's been, been a real pleasure. I've really enjoyed it. Heck yeah, it was awesome hearing all your insights. <laughs> and I feel like I just need to throw away my barbell. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Do it. <laughs> They're all tools, Allie. Yeah, right. We're all tools. <laughs> we are. That's that's the bottom line. We are tools. The barbell's using me. <laughs> okay, so how can the fitheads go find your programming? Um, on Instagram, you can find me at TRX Traveler, and uh, if you want to um, have a little look at my story um, and my programs and how I would love to help um, and do help people achieve their fitness goals with TRX the band, I'm at trxtraveler.com. Yeah, that is the best places to reach me. Mm -hmm. As long as you're not busy box breathing. Can't uh, touch those 10 minutes. <laughs> unless it's my 10 minute time, forget it. Forget it. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Okay. Thanks again. This was great. Thank you. Cheers, guys. Cheers. And thank you to the Fit Heads. If you're on Apple Podcasts, please rate and review. That helps us out a whole lot. And we'll see you next week. <laughs> <laughs>